Struggling to get your products seen on Amazon? Well, you're not alone. Most beginners make the same mistakes that keep their products on page 10 instead of getting them where they need to be, right in front of the buyer. In this video, I'm gonna break down our exact strategies that help us rank on page one continuously for over 20 active brands that we manage. We've just ranked one for a search term that has 120,000 searches. I'm gonna break down exactly how we do that in this video. Through this video has eight steps. And if you follow at least six of those eight steps, you're gonna be in a good place. So let's jump right in. First and foremost is your master keyword list. Your master keyword list is critical in order to scale on Amazon. And this is the part where I see most beginners mess up. This is the fundamentals of your scale. And by understanding your master keyword list and segmenting it out in the correct fashion, you're gonna set yourself up to succeed. In order to build this master keyword list, I like to utilize tools like Datadoc that allows us to dive in on a niche and target 10 to 50 products at once, pile all the keywords. It makes things much easier and above easier, it makes things things quicker, allows us to do research and understand how to position our listings. Now, before we even jump into SEO, positioning is key. Understanding your product and why people want to purchase your product is a big part of the battle. And it's something that most people neglect. Luckily, keyword research helps us understand our products. And on top of understanding the products, it gives us ideas for how to market products. So let's jump right into the first step of a keyword process. First, I'm gonna open up good old Amazon and I'm gonna search for a phrase that my product could fall under. So when we look for dog clothes, Amazon gives us tons of clues. We have dog clothes for small dogs, for medium dogs, for large dogs. And then we have dog clothes for girl, for boy. And this really helps us get actual data from Amazon telling us what people are searching for. What kind of categories of dog clothes could we angle for? And one of the beginning mistakes that I see people make is trying to target those root words. A root word is the core word that people are searching for, dog clothes. And as you move into longer phrases, so dog clothes for small dogs, you now have a long tail keyword. And these long tail keywords typically are not as competitive as the root keyword. And if you could angle your listing properly before you even go in and do your PPC and your optimizations, you look at the data. If there's one thing that's constant, it's that Amazon is a demand capture platform. We don't come to Amazon to create the demand. Sure, some people do, particularly the TikTok marketers that are trying to generate a new product and then push it to Amazon. But typically speaking, we're coming into Amazon to capture demand. And that first starts with building your master keyword list and understanding where the demand goes. So before you even launch a product, we need to really understand where is the demand and how do we angle our products to take over that demand? How do we build our keyword list in order to target and take over those specific search volumes? So when we look here, we have ideas for how we can position the product. We have small, medium, large, that seems to be a pain point. On top of that, we have girl and boy. So these are good clues that we can start with. Let's say we're going in for dog clothes for girls. Here we can see all different types of dog clothes. So Data Dive has this awesome tool called the Niche Dive. That's gonna use their algorithm to select a lot of competitors that are similar. So from here, we can see a lot of different types of dog clothes. And I will go ahead and click one and do a niche dive. Now that this is loaded, we can take a look at all the product details by a relevancy standpoint of the current dog clothes for girls. So we can see Jekyllon, Fabry Castle, Kaingantoso. That one is a hard one to say. Nonetheless, we wanna find ones that have some sort of relevancy. From here, I'm just gonna select a bunch of them because what I am doing is not necessarily looking for competitors for search keywords, but I'm looking at the overall market and trying to get an understanding of what possible search terms are people looking for when they're looking for these products. From here, we can see we have 20 ASIN selected. When I'm actually selecting a, a product of my own, I go up to 50. For this example, I'm just going to do 26. And what's going to load here is the master keyword list. We can see here there's a common trend that China is dominating this niche. And it's not a niche that I recommend going into, just right off the bat. But as you can see here, this dive went through, we have around 26 competitors, and now we can really see how the people are searching in order to find our product. So I like to organize it from highest to lowest so I can understand where the searches are coming from. So for these products, since they're lower price, I would search for search volume over a thousand. This is gonna give us good indicators of where people are actually searching. Now. 
looking through these niches, we can start understanding there's also smaller niches. There's dog winter clothes. That could be a niche. There's dog sweaters. There's chihuahua clothes girl. We have extra small dog clothes. We have pet clothes, which is more general. Typically speaking, when I am looking through a niche, I'm trying to find something like chihuahua clothes girl. This is a phrase that could potentially have the ability to come in and position your product. Here you can see there are some relevancy products. So we have a chihuahua here, which and we have a poodle here. So looking in this niche, probably not something I'd really wanna go into. It's super competitive and people are already relevant for this. So let's use this concept and see, can we find a product that could have good potential? So now that we saw what we don't wanna market for, we just did a search here for a barbecue grill set. Let's do the same concept and do another niche dive. So essentially our process is searching inside of Amazon and trying to find the best niches based on search volume but we're confident we can come in, we can provide a better product, and then we can outmarket them. So when we look in here, now we have some more products that we can use to look for keywords. And let's do a quick dive here. We can see here, this is also pretty dominated by Chinese sellers. To show you what I mean about niche keywords, I'm gonna use this sanitizer brand that we're scaling into Amazon. You can see here, we're ranked number one for some of these lower search volume keywords from unscented hand sanitizer to unscented hand sanitizer travel sign. Now, before we launch these products, we understood that people are looking for unscented hand sanitizer and there was a gap in the market. And by finding the demand and addressing the gap, we were able to come in and rank pretty quickly for this product. As you can see from right to left, we're advancing in rank across almost all the keywords. Take note how first we ranked for unscented hand sanitizer sanitizer spray, which is a longer keyword. But by ranking for this keyword, we were able to add more sales. Now more people are buying from us organically for these keywords. And these keywords actually help us rank for hand sanitizer spray because they're root keywords. And by building sales velocity, Amazon loves it. Amazon absolutely loves sales velocity. So if we can rank for longer tail keywords first, then we move into the root keywords. We are shooting the sales velocity up. Amazon starts liking you. You're able to move up in organic ranks. As we're optimizing for Amazon SEO, we're also optimizing for the future. And it's important to stay ahead of the curve, ahead of the wave. That way, when the wave comes, you're able to catch it and surf it. I believe our boy Bezos came up with that phrase. Cosmos tries to understand the meaning and the context behind the words. And as we move into the future, Amazon's gonna know what we're trying to search for with intent-based search. So if I was searching for shampoo, for instance, Amazon would know that I want shampoo without any chemical preservatives. I always look for all natural shampoo. So these types of things are gonna be taken in account for these type of searches in the future. So we're trying to understand that, understand that Cosmos is going to read our images and then convert that into keywords and then convert that into your listing juice. It sounds crazy, but images are more important than ever. And we make sure that our images are hyper relevant for the specific keywords that we're trying to take over. So if we're going for longer tail keywords, we're hyper relevant for those longer tail keywords until we take over those keywords. And then we're adjusting our creative, we're adjusting our strategy, and we're also adjusting our PPC strategy simultaneously to come complement our overall strategy going into Amazon. People want readability. Amazon does not like keyword stuff. Less is more. And understanding the correct way to put together your title, the correct way to put together your bullet points, the correct way to put together your alt text is all important. The nice part about Data Dive is it'll do 90% of this hard work for you. What we'll do is we'll come here, we'll click on Listing Builder, and the Listing Builder will help the fundamentals incrementally. And when you come in and take a look at the overall listing juice of our titles versus our competitors, you can see here clearly we have 1.9 million in search volume. And that's because we have positioned our titles more broad to take over more market share now that we have advanced in ranks. Now, the cool part about this is we can literally suggest the keywords that we want to use according to the data. Now, as we get more advanced, we want to be more particular with the keywords we're using. But when I look at Amazon and we look at a lot of sellers, we do tons and tons of audits and 90% of them are so unoptimized, it's not even fun. And just by doing something like this, a allows you to take 
the nuts and bolts of what you need in order to be decently positioned in terms of SEO. Here you can see that this suggested 145 keywords for us on how we could position this and gives us a title ranking juice of 1.9 million. So inside of Data Dive, we have a feature called bullets. On here, we can literally just click suggest keywords and that's gonna suggest the keywords based on the bottom down here. So you can select the keywords that you feel are relevant and from there, it will suggest those. All you have to do is click AI bullets and it's gonna select the keywords here and from here, you can put the topic of the bullets or the keywords and hit generate. And from here, it literally does the hard work for you. This gives you a nice fundamental base and now you can make adjustments. So from here, we can see that the ranking juice is provided for each bullet point. The AI copywriter wrote the actual bullets. We can just click use in listing. And from here, it has now included the text on the specific keywords that we're trying to target without keyword stuffing. This stuff is awesome. It's so awesome that we can just use AI to come in and take our target root keywords or target keywords in general and be able to populate inside of our bullet points. And then on top of the bullet points, we can come in, do the same thing for the description. We can do the same thing for the generic keywords. And this stuff moves the needle. The amount of clients that we come into that don't even have their generic keywords in the back end blows my mind. It blows my mind. Amazon rewards the people that cross the T's and dot the I. So make sure that you're being very optimized while you're coming in and you're doing these things. Make sure you're crossing your T's. If you have 10 bullet points, list all 10. If you have five bullet points, list all five. If you have 200 characters that you can include in a title, use all 200 characters. Use as much as you can without sacrificing your conversion by saying ugly keywords or things that don't really make sense. You still want to use keywords and you still want to be very, very relevant, but be very particular in the keywords that you're using in order to overall improve your relevancy in your SEO. The cool part about that dive is you have tons of different tools that you can utilize in order to implement your listings. We have PPC keywords, PPC campaigns, PPC campaigns for launch. You can connect your seller central on top of your SEO to really get an understanding of how your keyword performance is looking like on top of your ads and how your ad spend is affecting everything, which it does affect your ability to index pretty significantly. And it's important to make sure that your PPC campaigns also complement your SEO strategy. And inside of PPC campaigns, we have different types of campaigns that will do different purposes on the SEO standpoint. For instance, we can run brand defense campaigns where we are defending our listings, but those typically don't give you advancement in your organic ranking. Whereas using exact match type campaigns will allow you to advance at a much faster pace inside of your SEO by complementing your SEO with exact match campaigns for the targets that are hyper relevant, if the math pencils. <laughs> And on top of that, we have the niche dive that shows us how the competitors are in terms of the reviews, their number of reviews, as well as their pricing. Are they moving up? Are they moving down? And this gives us a clear understanding of how our product is performing against the ranking. So if our competitors have moved their price down significantly, we lost some ranking. Okay, it is what it is. One thing to note is spending the money to rank one is not always the best option. Sometimes it's better to be ranked number four or rank number five. It depends on your competitors, how much they're spending on the specific keywords, what your margins are. It's not always best to be the number one most aggressive person, yet it does pay dividends if you can rank number one and be able to defend it where your competitors no longer want to spend in order to be in that position. They're like, okay, I'm cool number four. Now you've taken over number one and you can lower your spend a little bit or organically index and, and playing defense on rank number one and rank number two, rank number three can be more profitable long-term. Always depends and it is a unique situation on each niche depending on your competitors, depending on their behavior. And as you start moving deeper into the technicals, you start playing a very broad game of poker and trying to understand the fundamentals behind the business of your competitors. Are they willing to take a loss for six months in order to maintain their rank? Uh, there, it gets really deep when you start competing and recognizing brands. And a lot of times in here, there are brands that have the guise of having multiple choice. And on Amazon, there are brands that have three or four different brands that are under the same parent, but they have different brand names. You would think they're different competitors but it's all the same brand and understanding and mapping that out tends to help in the larger niches, specifically when we're with 
seven and eight figure clients. We'd really, really want to understand what the psychology is behind the other player, but it's also relevant in every niche and it's something that I would encourage you take the time out and really map out the niche. So we've optimized some of the bullet points, the title, the description with our AI builder and data dive. We can also use chat GPT modules and program the chat GPT modules based on Cosmo, based on Amazon's algorithm. And that's what we do. We have a chat GPT module that we've trained for our team that allows us to quickly come in and apply our master keyword list into our titles, our bullet points, our descriptions, and other places. And that's important, the other places. And I'm gonna drop the 10 place checklist that we use in order to make sure that you're in every single spot. In order of priority, we have the title, we have the search term fields, we have the bullet points, we have the A plus crawlable text. That's the text that we can put on the A plus content that allows it to index inside of Amazon. I'll show you here quickly on this list what the A plus content is. And you can see here that we have crawlable text that Amazon's able to come in and apply that crawlable text into their algorithm. A common mistake I see a lot of sellers do is not utilizing this as crawlable text. This is something that is free SEO space. Some people like to use the minimalistic designs. For me, I utilize the algorithm. I know that this helps us rank on the first page. It helped us rank this product on the first page. So understanding that and positioning our text in here tends to do very, very well. Also important at the very bottom, you have plenty of room to add different keywords at the very, very bottom of your A plus content. You can put whatever is relevant in the algorithm. This also gives us a place to increase your average order volume, topic for another day, but tons and tons of real estate here to add more text. And the more text we add in the Amazon, the more chance we have for it to pick up. Moving on with the list, we also have alt text for images. This is important. You can save your images with specific keywords and then upload them into Amazon and Amazon takes this into account. We wanna cross every single T and we wanna dot every single I. Moving on, we have the brand story. We have the brand story meta description. You can also reply to question and answers. That way you'll be able to index for those specific keywords. Your reviews do matter, but obviously you can't control your reviews. Your social posts matter as well as your external links. You can go and pay for news articles to promote your product and push it to Amazon, boosting your authority. So pointing from outside of Amazon into Amazon does help. Building the authority does help and sending traffic into Amazon does help considerably. Scaling on Amazon can be difficult. When I first started, I was doing everything. A to Z from your titles, the SEO, to the creative, to the product photos. It is difficult. And now that I've progressed and I've learned a ton of information, I like to give back as much as we can. And that's why I've created this YouTube channel where I can share that information that was very difficult for me to get in the first place. If you're doing over $30,000 a month in Amazon or in Shopify, and you're looking for a growth partner that's gonna take your business the next level, three, four, or five, 10X your business while doing it profitably, you can book a call in the description of this video. And in a 30 minute meeting, we will build you a customized strategy, A to Z, showing you the exact steps that you need to take in order to go to the next level. We're gonna outline everything from the nitty gritty, from your market research, to your SEO, to the relevancy strategies, everything that we've covered in this video, we will do for you just to provide you value. Full transparency, we are very particular with who we work with. We have a 14 day wait list currently as I'm recording this video. If you're an action taker and you're ready to take your brain to the next level, click that link in the description and let's chat. If you're looking to implement a new main image strategy, I have another video that we just recorded that can help boost your conversion significantly. Watch that here.